Hey, what's up guys? Recently, I got my hands on the iPhone 6s and I thought I will make a tips and tricks video to help all the new iOS users and advanced users as this video will help you to learn more about the iPhone and the iOS 9. So let's get started. Starting with the features that are new to the iPhone 6s. First is 3D Touch. Now you can force touch on any app icons, emails, messages or photos to bring up a quick preview or quick options. Like for camera, you have options to quickly take a selfie, record slow-mo and more. For emails, you have inbox, compose a new mail, search email and more. Similarly, we have force touch features for other apps as well. Some third-party apps has also received an update for this new feature. Also, while browsing photos, you can force touch on any pictures for a peek. And while peeking, you can slide the preview up for other options like copy, share or delete. Same goes for the emails. You can force touch on any email messages for a peek and then slide it up for these options. While peeking, you can slide right to mark it as read or slide left to delete that email. You can use 3D touch to switch between applications. Just force touch from the edge of the screen and swipe to switch. Similar features are there on other apps like messaging app, phone app and so on. Next is live wallpaper. We can set live wallpapers on the new iPhone. Just go to settings, wallpaper and then live wallpapers. Once you have applied the wallpaper, you can press and hold on the wallpaper for this live effect. Next, taking live photos. By default, live photos are enabled. You can enable or disable it from this icon. Basically, what this does is, it captures a few seconds before and after the picture to give you this live effect. Now, if you tap and hold on that photo, you will get this live photo effect. You can also apply live photos as your live wallpapers. Now let's get to the basics. Sometimes apps are not updated for the latest OS or you may face a crash on different applications. So there is a way to force close an app rather than to restart the phone. All you have to do is hold down the power button and once the power slider pops up, let go the power button and then keep holding the home button. This will force close any app that is actively running. Next, it's soft reset. Sometimes the touch or the screen does not respond. So you can opt for soft reset. Just hold down the power button and the home button at the same time until you see the Apple logo. This will restart your phone and all your background running apps. Next, ringtone and notification volume won't be affected by the volume keys. By default, while decreasing the media volume, you will decrease the ringer volume as well. So to skip that, go to settings, sounds, and here you have an option called change with buttons. Turning this off will keep your ringtone and your alert tone on the desired volume and won't change when you press the volume keys. Next. Display message timings. On the messages app, you can view the timing of the message by sliding left. This will help you to see the exact timing of your conversation. Next, we have do not disturb on messages. If you are annoyed by some text messages like offers from your carriers or other senders, you can turn on the do not disturb mode by going on to details and then turn on the do not disturb for the sender. Doing this will only show the notification count but will not alert you. Next, private mode on Safari. With features like handoff and iCloud sync, it isn't safe that all your browsing data are synced between all your devices. So whenever you need a secure browsing, you can turn on the private mode by going on to open tabs and then tapping on the private mode. Now all your browsing data are sync free and not recorded. Next, keyboard shortcuts. 
There is a quick way of typing messages on your iPhone. Go on to settings, general, keyboard and here we have an option called text replacement. Tap on it and you will find a range of shortcuts for your keyboard like OMW for on my way, ASAP for as soon as possible and many more. You can also add your own message by tapping here. Say for example, AO means at office. Now whenever you input the shortcut, the full phrase will be typed. It's really great for sending messages quickly. Now let's talk about Siri. Some new and old features that are tricky. First, describing relations to Siri. You can let Siri know your best friends, family, etc. For example, you can say, Tom is my best friend. So this will label that contact as your best friend. And whenever you want to contact him using Siri, you can just say, call my best friend. And there you go. Similarly, you can assign your relatives, colleagues, etc. Second is music detection. You can activate Siri and ask what's playing. Then the Siri will detect the song that is playing nearby. Next, it's system settings. If you didn't already knew, you can have Siri perform certain actions like you can tell it to turn on and off the airplane mode, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. Also, this command works for increasing and decreasing the brightness, volume, etc. Next is accessibility. There are a lot of features that will help you to get most out of your iPhone. Go on to settings, general, and under accessibility, you have different options here. I will point out the ones that are important. First, we have speech. You have got two different options on speech. The first one is speak selection. That is, whenever you select a word, sentence, or a paragraph, you will get an option to make your iPhone speak the selected text. Similarly, Speak Screen will read the entire text from the screen. This can be very handy if you want your iPhone to read your emails or documents out loud. You also have options to choose voices, speaking rate, etc. Next, Increase Contrast. Under Increase Contrast, you have options to reduce transparency, darken colors, and reduce white point. Reduce transparency and darken colors are self-explanatory. Darken colors will increase the display saturation, which will be helpful while reading ebooks and editing pictures. But it may consume battery. Reduce white point will slightly turn down the white tones of the display. This won't have any impact on your viewing angles or visibility. Rather, it will make your iPhone more usable at low lights and slightly improve the battery performance. Next is reduce motion. You can also turn on reduce motion to reduce the motion of user interface including the parallax effect which will result in better battery life. Next we have is 3D touch. From here you can turn on and off the 3D touch as well as adjust its sensitivity. Next is call audio routing. The call audio routing can be used to set your iPhone to directly route the incoming calls to your Bluetooth headphones or the loudspeaker. You can turn on LED flash for alerts which will make the LED flash when you get a notification. Very handy if you like to put your phone face down. Next is the balance between left and right. If you feel the left side of your earphone or the headphones are louder than the right side or vice versa, you can set it manually from here. Next is Guided Access. Guided Access will lock the iPhone at a certain screen. So let me explain this. First, you need to turn on Guided Access. Then triple press the Home key. And here, you can also circle the areas you want to disable. And then hit Start. If it's your first time, you have to give a passcode. This will lock the iPhone on the current app and you cannot use anything else but the app itself. To exit the Guided Access, you will have to triple press the Home button and then give your passcode. This feature comes in very handy while giving your phone to your kids. Next, we have accessibility shortcuts. You can assign your iPhone to perform various actions when you triple press the home key, like turning on voiceovers, invert colors, grayscale, zoom, 
switch control and assistive touch. If you enable all this and then you triple press your home button, you get an option on which action you want to perform. Selecting assistive touch makes a lot of sense. Personally, I use it to enable and disable assistive touch as I don't want the shortcut to take space on my screen. Next, music video as an audio. You can play your music video as an audio. Just launch the video app and play the music video. Exit the video app and now you can play back the audio from the control center. Last but not the least is the field test. There is a secret code that can enable a few tests and modification to your iPhone. Just dial asterisk 3001 hashtag 12345 hashtag asterisk. And here you can view some infos about your SIM card, cell environment etc. If you don't want this info, a quick tip is that you can tap on signal strength to change it to numbers. Since iOS 9 has this shortcut to go to the previous app, you can pull down the notification to view your signal strength. And if you want this to be as default, press and hold the power button until the power slider arrives and hold the home button until the field test app is closed. And there you see. Now you get the numeric representation of the signal strength. So yes, that's all for this video guys. I have second episode coming up shortly. Stay tuned for that. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and share if you did. Stay tuned for more and I will catch you guys in the next one.